Hello buddy Crow back again and you might be wondering why I'm doing another pickup video so soon after the last one. Well that's because I did the last one uh, last week just so I could get one out there so I could focus on the one today which would be all the pickups from uh, the video game summit which I was at yesterday. Uh, I'm filming this on July 12th, I don't know when I'll be posting the video but um, video game summit was July 11th. It was in North Lake, which was a different location than it normally had been. Uh, in fact, it wound up being a lot smaller. Um, in the other location, which was a Lombard, they had three rooms, but I know they were having some issue with the uh, the hotel, and they needed they wanted to move, uh, so they moved into this new location. It was the uh, Midwest Conference Center. Never been there before. It was it's still very close. So uh, what, I really didn't spend a whole lot of time there. I probably spent only about three or four hours there and uh, probably running some footage up there. Uh, and that's all the footage I, I shot. I shot about literally one minute of footage. All right, as always, the first booth I usually look for is Windy Gaming. I usually go there first because they usually have stuff um, that I'm interested in. So uh, one of the games I picked up there is, uh, what is this called? Mickey Mouse Fushigi no Kudibin Daibuken. Something like that. I have no idea what it means. All I really know is that in the U.S., this is Mickey Mouse Capade. Uh, I, even though I had Mickey Mouse Capade on the NES, I kind of wanted to get it for the uh, Famicom too. I saw that it was only five bucks, so I figured I'd pick it up. It was kind of interesting because um, I'm looking at the, the cartridge here. It's got Alice in Wonderland uh, featured heavily on it, whereas the uh, NES box art was completely different. Second game I kind of picked up there is $10. Actually, it was probably one of the last ones I, I picked up there. And it is uh, The Goonies 2 for Kelly Saigon no Chosen, which is pretty much exactly the same thing as The Goonies 2 that we got on the NES. Now, I, want, I think the reason I picked this up was just because, hey, you know what, it's the Japanese version. But I kind of wanted it just in case I ever got the Japanese version of the first Goonies game, which never actually came out in the U.S. So I could have uh, Goonies 1 and 2 uh, at the same time on, uh, on the Famicom. Last Famicom game I picked up at Windy Gaming was, and this is the one that caught my eye first, this is Door Door. And I looked at it and I was like, this looks very interesting. I've never seen this cartridge before. And I asked if they knew anything about it. And the one guy at the booth said, oh, um, that's Door Door. It's an awesome game. It's an awesome puzzle game. So I was like, good enough for me. I picked it up and I did play it a little bit. And I gotta admit, this is the type of game that I, I'm looking for in a Famicom game. Something that never came out in the US and is really intuitive to play and it's pretty fun. Even though it, it took me about five minutes to figure out the gameplay and pass the first level. But um, just, I don't wanna get too into too many details about the game, but there's monsters that are on the screen. You have to open a door, let them go into the door and close the door before they can get back out. It's actually a pretty good puzzle game, and it's by Enix. So, um, yeah, really interesting type of game, and uh, glad I picked this up. One of my, probably my top pickup of the expo, I would say. Um, finally, at Windy Gaming, I picked up a Super Famicom title, uh, Camel Tree. Now, I knew exactly what this was when I picked it up. I remember in um, magazines a long time ago, kind of like the preview section showed uh, Camel Tree, and basically it's a kind of like a marble game where you don't control the marble, but you control the maze. You basically rotate it left and right. Uh, certain points you can jump the ball, so I guess you get a little bit of um, a control there of the ball. It can also make it drop faster to break through certain bricks, uh, but you basically have to navigate the maze before the time runs out. It was a $15 title, but again, I'm always looking to uh, increase my Super Famicom collection. Alright, there was one booth that was off to the side, and I kind of inadvertently was talking to the, one of the guys that was running booth. I didn't even know he was running the booth. And I kind of mentioned that I'd like to see some either 
uh, Atari computer games or Commodore 64 games, because those type of games aren't really, uh, you don't see too many of those titles, even at big events like the Midwest Gaming Classic. And he said, hey, I got a whole box of Commodore 64 stuff, and I have a couple of Atari uh, games too. Well, the first thing Atari game he showed me was a disc game. And I'm like, oh, I don't have a disc drive. And he's like, I got one of those back at wherever he, he was keeping storage. And I'm like, well, well I don't. I wouldn't probably even buy one now, even if I, uh, <laughs> even if I had the money, because I don't really have anything to to play it on or whatever. But anyway, um, he showed me the box of Commodore 64 stuff, and it was all loose disc stuff. And I was really not interested in loose discs. A lot of them were copies and stuff. Um, but he showed me he had a bunch of Atari 8-bit computer cartridges, and I maybe should have bought more than I did. I only bought two, but there was a couple other ones I was kind of interested in, but I just didn't because the price of them were a little bit high, and I was tr I kept trying to go on a budget pretty much. I was not trying to limit myself to the amount of money I spent. But the first one I had to buy, well, actually, I didn't have to buy this one. I thought I was holding a different cartridges, but this this is Congo Bongo. I actually saw this at the Midwest Gaming Classic, and they were asking twenty five dollars for for this game, I think there and. I knew it was going to be like the Atari 5200 version, and I didn't really like the 5200 version, even, you know, ignoring even the controller issues. I didn't think it looked that good or ran that good, but uh, he said he wanted $10 for it. The label was really good condition. So I was like, yeah, okay, throw it in the pile. All right, now this is actually the first game that caught my eye, and I was like, I, I have to get this based on the price he said. But this is uh, Zaxxon in cartridge format. Now, when I was a kid, I remember playing this game on the Atari computer, but we had a cassette tape of it. So when I saw the cartridge version, now I saw this at the Midwest Gaming Classic, and the guy wanted $40 for this cartridge. And I looked it up, and I was like, oh yeah, it's really selling for that much on eBay. Uh, I believe it was the sold prices I was looking at. So when I asked how much uh, he wanted for this, he said ten dollars, and I'm like, sold. You got me. Uh, I gotta have this. Uh, and to me, this is at the time this was probably the the best port of the game, at least to me. Um, even compared to the ColecoVision, the ColecoVision version um, scrolled terribly, in my opinion. Uh, it was all choppy. I I just didn't like it. This version is really super smooth. All right, in the same container, he had two uh, Atari 2600 games. I can't even remember what the one was now. I think it was one I had. Uh, it was an iMagic game. But the other one he had was Omega Race. Now, I th it was only a couple bucks, so I picked it up, and I knew I didn't have it for the 2600. But if I had looked at the cartridge more carefully, I may have not bought it at all. It says, use left joystick with booster grip adapter. When I was starting to look into this game, it turns out that this game was actually bundled with a controller adapter. What it was was it was a little stick that you slid on top of the regular Atari 2600 joystick. You plugged the controller into the booster grip and the booster grip into the console. And what it did was it gave you an extra button because in Omega Race it's using one button for uh, thrust and one button to fire. Now why they couldn't just you have you push up to boost and a button to fire. I think that would have solved the problem of not enough buttons, but rather than having an accessory just solely for that. So I couldn't play the game properly. So the footage you're seeing is just me kind of flying around, not being able to fire. Now, um, I, I might want to try and get the booster grip adapter. I didn't see any on eBay. I don't know how rare they are. But supposedly you could use a ColecoVision controller as well. But I don't have a ColecoVision controller because I don't have a ColecoVision anymore. But I do have the ColecoVision flashback. Unfortunately, those controllers were wired incorrectly, and they don't—they're not really interchangeable with a regular ColecoVision. So I tried it anyway. Really didn't work. And for fun, I tried the Intellivision flashback controller. Didn't really work. You know, I didn't try my um, 7800, 7800 controller or Master System or Genesis controllers. I could have tried all those. I just didn't because I didn't think of it at the time. Don't think those would work either, because I think if they did work, there would have been mentioned that, oh, you could use a ColecoVision controller or a Genesis controller or something like that. I'm, I'm sure I would have ran across the information somewhere. 
So as of right now, I really can't play Omega Race until I either get a ColecoVision controller or a Find That Booster Grip controller. All right, as I was making my third trip around, I uh, was looking more closely at what some of the vendors had, and I saw uh, this game is a test drive, Eve of, of Destruction. Now he's asking $25 for it, which seems like much, but I kind of looked it up online and yeah, it's selling for about 25 bucks or more. So I was like, you know what, I'm a sucker for Demolition Derby games. And I vaguely remember this game and I got it. And um, it's really good. I, I'm really surprised how good this is. I'm almost, uh, I'm kind of... Uh, sad that I never picked this game up when it was brand new. I kind of heard of it, but Atari kind of had a bad reputation at the time, especially with the Test Drive series. Uh, starting with 4 and 5, those games are kind of bland and not really interesting, and I kind of felt like this would be the same thing, so I never picked it up, but it is really cool. Um, did a little drive. Uh, the footage you're seeing now is a uh, figure 8 track with a jump in the middle, and just plowing it to somebody in mid-air in the middle of the figure eight is pretty cool. There's also like trailer races, school bus races, and I only scratched the surface of the game. So I, uh, I'm really glad I picked this up, and it's, I think it's well worth the price, and it's probably a hidden gem. All right, next up I picked up Ridge Racer 5, one of the Ridge Racer games I did not have. So it was actually in a bin at one of the vendors, and it was like a $3. Everything in the bin was $3. So the game was only $3, and it included everything. So I was like, oh, this is a no-brainer for only $3 to uh, get the Ridge Racer game that was on the PS2. I actually don't know what other ones I'm missing, but I'm probably only missing two or three Ridge Racer games now. So I uh, played it a little bit. Played just fine. Excellent condition. Uh, well worth a, the price of three dollars in my opinion all right next up i have a game here that i can't show any footage of this is uh spirit camera the cursed memoir now this is a 3ds game and i don't really have a capture device for the 3ds normally when i want to capture stuff for the 3ds i just point the camera at the screen and kind of put that on a on a table or something uh, unfortunately, this is an augmented reality game, which means you have to pick up the 3DS, use the camera, and find ghosts that are hidden around. But this included everything. It included There's like an AR sheet that you need to, I guess, use for the game. We actually had this game at one point, and then it disappeared. We don't know what happened to it. So uh, we saw it for 12 bucks, and I rebought it uh, there for my wife. The second game I'm just not going to show anything of is this China Warrior for the TurboGrafx-16. Um, the price on here is 15 I know I got it for 10 at the booth, but when I got home and I started entering the games in my database, it turned out I already had it. So I was like almost sure I didn't have it. I was sure I didn't have it. I would have looked it up if I wasn't sure, but uh, God, I was like, I was sure I didn't have it. And sure enough, I did. I probably have never played the game I own. On the upside, the manual was in better condition um, than the one I already had. So I swapped out the manuals. I don't know quite what I'm going to do with this yet. So there's that. And then I do have a couple things I'm going to switch the camera around for. Um, not video games, uh, but the next thing is video game related. One of the last things we bought as we were leaving the summit, there was actually a booth that was like right near the exit as we were leaving. Uh, we'd seen these things um, walking around, but then I decided, you know, I want to get some of them. Uh, these were $3 each. And uh, here's one of them, for example. It's a uh, little Goomba, and I don't know if you can see this or not, but it says Pepsi Twist. So apparently in Japan, there was a, I guess a promotion, a Pepsi promotion, where they actually had Mario characters done in this style. So um, let's see if we could get it to, a little bit closer there. So yeah, it looks pretty cool. And uh, they were selling this for $3 each. And if you bought multiples, you dropped the price. Uh, there's like the, a complete set, I think. is How many was a complete set? Like 30? 30. Yeah, 30 in the complete set. He had uh, a ton of them. But he, did, he didn't have a complete set. The most he had was 25. So he was missing five of them. He was asking $50 for it. But I was like, you know what? I don't really want all of them. So I picked up five of them. 
So uh, this was one of them I thought was pretty cool. It's a Goomba. Um, Next up, let's see here. We got a uh, Buzzy Beetle. It's one of them I picked. And these are kind of like bottle tops. I mean, you could put them on top of an existing top. He said that when they sold these in Japan, uh, the bottle, I guess, had a plastic bag hanging off the side and you didn't know which one you were going to get. I don't know how long, I guess, I don't know how long ago Japan did this, but I guess his brother or something lives in Japan and he sent them a bunch of stuff to sell at the expo. I thought this was pretty cool. If I was going to buy one, this was, my, this was my first choice, the Hammer Brother. One of my favorite... Uh, enemies in the Mario Brothers series. So uh, the Hammer Brother. And then we've got a um, Super Luigi here. Pretty cool. Uh, and just the effect on these are really cool. And then finally we've got a uh, far Fire Mario. I could have gotten a lot more, but again, I didn't want to spend too much money, so I figured what well, each of these were three bucks. I think he dropped the price down to 12 or 13 bucks. And I just realized it's like they're not, not in center, so there we go. Spread him out a little bit more uh, as I'm going to cut the camera anyway <laughs> to the next item. All right, I saved this item for last because it's not video game related, but I still bought it at the uh, the summit. But uh, on the wall, after I bought the stuff from Windy Gaming, my wife saw this, and it was at one of the booths, and it was just they had stuff stacked up against the wall, not necessarily video game related. But I was like, ooh, what is that? And I asked the guy, oh, let me see what that is. Let me, I couldn't tell what it was because this is all I saw. And um, when he gave it to me, I opened it up, and there was a 12-inch uh, Evil Ash figure in there. Now, I kind of remember when this came out. I, I remember seeing it at Suncoast Video. And uh, I don't know if I would have bought it back then or not if I had the money. Uh, I, I again back then I was I was big Evil Dead uh, Evil uh, not Evil Dead but necessarily but uh, well Evil Dead and Army of Darkness uh, but Army of Darkness specifically but I didn't really have the money to pay for this kind of stuff now if it was Ash I would have almost paid any price he asked for it but since it was Evil Ash I was like uh, how much are you asking for it and he's like oh thirty I was like oh thirty dollars. And I don't know if I want to spend that much. And, and he's like, then he immediately dropped it to 25 And I was like, yeah, I'll buy it. So I uh, thought this was pretty cool. I mean, it, it, the box is kind of worn and torn. There's a rip there. And especially on the side here, the box is, is ripped a bit, torn. Like, it almost seems like it's been cut here. But it, I could kind of tell that nothing in here has been out of the box. You can still see the plastic stuff that would need to be cut to, to take it out. But it's still there. Uh, but this is just really cool. I would have would love maybe one day to find uh, the regular Ash figure to go with Evil Ash. Uh, uh, yeah, Evil Ash. I do have a lot of other figures. Maybe I can make a separate video of that, all my Army of Darkness stuff. As you see, my uh, this thing is huge. 12 inches. And my tripod's as high as it'll go, and it's kind of wobbly. So as I'm moving the box around, you might see the camera shake a little bit. Um, but yeah, I wanted to save that for last. And that's all the pickups for the Video Game Summit. Now, I did pick up some stuff on the way home, and I'm, I'm going to get some more games in the mail. I, I was looking for certain things, I didn't find them, so I kind of just made uh, bought them online. And I'll save all that stuff for the next video, the next pickups video. I don't know when that will be. Uh, could be a couple weeks, a couple months. I don't know. But uh, until then, see you next time. Bye.